Tanstack Form version 1 introduces a solution to one of the most common problems with all form libraries reducing boilerplate and increasing consistency. This is the old version, where you had the form logic and the UI logic, and you had to mix both to make sure that, for example, your field component had proper listeners and values here in the UI. And this is the new version, where you can just define your field here. This is obviously type safe, that's the name field of our form. And as you notice in the children here, I don't even need to bind the on change listener, the value on the field. Everything is already happening in the text field component and same goes for checkbox, for select and for all the other components you might want to create while also making sure that the UI is exactly the same for each component. I'm Leonardo, this is the Tanstack Form tutorial, subscribe to the channel and let's begin. The first step to use the new API is to create a file, let's call it index.ts6 inside a form folder and this file is where the global hooks are defined. But don't worry if this is using React context under the hood, because we're also using Tanstack store, making sure to have proper fine-grained reactivity. The second step now is to create our second hook, and this is the one we're gonna import in our application, and we can do that with create form hook. This is really where all the magic happens, and we can export the use up form hook, and this is the hook we're gonna use inside our application. Now here we're gonna pass our field context and our form context. And as you can see here, this also takes a couple of other parameters, field components and form components. And speaking of consistency, this is the structure making sure that all our forms are using exactly the same UI component. So let me show you how you can create these components. The first one we're gonna do is obviously the text field component. So let me create one. This is our text field component. From here, we want to access the field instance of our form, as this isn't just a generic UI component, but is a text field that is pre-bound with all our form logic. And we can do that by defining a constant field that is gonna take its value from use field context. And as you can see, use field context is exactly one of the functions we return from our create form hook context. And this makes sure that when you're defining a text field, you're gonna get all the information for a specific field. We're gonna see later how. And now that we have access to the field, we can also take care about the UI. In this case, I'm using ShadCN, so I'm gonna import this component from the UI input folder. But here you see an error, and that's because at this point, there's no way to know the type of the value of our field, but you can just add a generic here. This is gonna be a string, and that's basically it. So now we have an input that is already bound to a field component. But what if we want to add some parameters here? Well, we can obviously do that. Just add the label here, for example. I can wrap it inside a div, and I can say that I want to pass some parameters here, like text field props, and read it from there. And with that, we can create our first version of our form. So we can head over user form, and well, let's try to add something here. First of all, we can create our const form, and this time, instead of using the generic use form, we can use use app form, that is the hook we just registered. We can, for example, say we have a name and a surname, and we want to have form.handle submit here. If we want to display the name field, this was the previous approach with form.field, specifying the name and adding all the UI in the children. But now we can do something better. First of all, don't forget to register your new field here. So text field is the one I just created. And by adding text field here inside field components, I can go back to my form, and here I can type form.app field. I can say that this is the field name. Obviously, this is type safe as everything. And here, in my children, I have access to field, obviously. And this field has a text field property. I can use it as a component. So field.text field is a perfectly fine component I can render here. It is obviously showing error, and the reason is that the property label is missing. So we can add here our label, say that this is the name. And if you want to add a surname, well, there isn't much work I need to do. Just type surname here, surname there. And yep, that's working perfectly fine. But if you notice here, we also had this field info component that was basically making sure to show the errors. And we can do something similar with the new API. But in this case, we might want to do everything already inside our text field. Something we can do for sure is to add here field.state.meta.errors and show all the errors here. But if we want to show the error not only on the text field, but also on the other component, I probably recommend you to just create a field errors component. And from here, you can paste everything you need. 
in this case, I am just passing any field meta as a properties as I don't care about uh, whatever meta I get. The only thing that I care is that if the component is not touched, I don't want to show any error. And if the component has some error, since I'm going to use Zoda's validator, I know that I'm going to have a message as string. And this is pretty much all the code you need. And from here, just add kill errors. And well, that's pretty much it. Now, let me do a magic trick and paste here magically a checkbox field component that follows pretty much the same thing. I've got again some props with label and description and this is just a simple checkbox with shot cn and I can also do the same with the select field component. Now you can pause the video here, copy the code or don't worry I'm just gonna add the github repository link in the description so that you can easily copy all the code. So now I can go back to our index and make sure that both the checkbox field and select field components are here imported. So that when I get back to my form here inside form.appfill, I not only have text field, but well, also select and checkbox field. The next step, if you notice, is to see what this form component is. And in this case, if field components are fields bound to a specific component where you can just run use field context to get the context of a field, if we go back to our form components, those are components that are provided with the form context. For example, we can use that, let me do the magic again, to create the submit button. I'm using use form context hook to make sure that I've got access to the form API. And in this case, I don't want this component to render every single time something changes on my form. So I can use use store to achieve reactivity. It is exported from React form, but it is using Tanstack store under the hood. And I want this component to re-render only when the is submitting flag or the can submit flag are updated. With that, I've got a submit button that is disabled automatically when the form cannot be submitted. Let's attach the submit button again here into the form components. I can add, yeah, submit button. And if I go back to user form from here, instead of form.app field, I can use form.app form. And in this case here, I can use form.submit button. That is exactly the button I just attached. From here, I can say submit. And there it is, our submit button. Before adding more logic to this form, let me remind you that this index.ts6 is something you have to create just once, and then you can call use a form in any component you'd like, and this will create a new form instance that has its own field context and form context, which means you don't need to take care about the context manually as everything is handled magically with use up form. And now as promised, let's add a little bit more logic to this form. I'm not gonna type everything manually, but just paste something from the clipboard. Let me quickly introduce what is going on. I just created a schema with Zod, that is a user schema. A user is gonna have name, surname, and a boolean for his accepted terms, and then some contact information, like an email, a phone, and a preferred account admitted. That is gonna be one of those up here. Now, this is probably something you have defined into a separate file that is basically the validating schema. So it just created a region I can close off and let's forget about it. Here, I'm gonna replace the default values with the default user I created, well, inside the region here. And let me close that again. And I can also add the schema as a validator. It's gonna be on change. And here I'm gonna run the user schema every time a field change into my form to make sure that it follows the schema. Here we have only name and surname that are text fields. We can do pretty much the same with the boolean is accepting terms, this one over here. And now we can use the checkbox field component. To handle all the other fields, I can just paste this block of code over here that is pretty much another couple of text fields and a select field. Notice that here I'm also passing the options that is basically an array I created from the Zot schema that holds all the value here. And if I go in the browser, that's pretty much it. You can see that the submit button is enabled. This is my full form. And if I click submit now, all the errors are going to appear. So here I can just make sure that the errors go away. Here I've got two errors that you can see. I can start with the capital letters and then make uh, the name longer. Saying goes from the surname, accept the term and condition, and also add a super valid email here. I can select my preferred content method. If I go to hit submit, well, this is exactly the output of my form. This definitely looks like it's working fine. Here I got an error, the submit button got disabled again. If I click again to accept, the submit button gets enabled back. There's one last thing worth mentioning, and it is 
this div over here with the context form. Here, I intentionally wrap everything inside the div to say, hey, maybe the context form is something that can be reused, not just in this single form, but in other forms, every time you have to add some context fields. So what can you do here? For sure, you can copy paste everything and add those in each single form. Or if we go back to our index.ts6, you're gonna notice that there's another thing coming out from here that is with form. And this is exactly the solution to make not just a single component reusable, but a set of large components reusable across multiple forms. But the bad news is that I already talked too much for this chapter, so I'm gonna explain with form in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to leave any kind of feedback about Unstack form here in the comments, on Discord, on GitHub, anywhere you want to reach us. Thanks again and see you soon. Bye!